I was born and raised in India. I did my medical school in India in a place called Indore, which is part of central India. I finished my medicine, did a year's internship, and then I came to Winnipeg. So plus 50 to minus 50, that was my transition. In Winnipeg, I was doing my MD postdoc and then uh, finished my master's there. I met my husband. He was in Toronto. I was doing some observerships in Toronto to get the feel for Canadian medical education system. We were invited to a friend's party to, you know, he was there, I was there, and then that was it. He moved to Winnipeg for a few months. As soon as he got there, he was like, this is very cold. And we made Kingston our home after that. The main reason why I wanted to be in pathology is that it's a very cognitive specialty. You take the clinical information, you look at the evidence that you have on the slide, you put it together and come up with a diagnosis. Breast cancer became one of the very um, sort of cornerstones of my research for all during residency. And then um, towards the end of my residency, my mom had breast cancer, so it, it you know even more firmed up my choice of going into breast pathology. Her pathologist there, she called me when she said, first pass, it looks like cancer, but I will just double check. An hour later, she called again. She said, you know, Sonal, I've tried it. Second pass, she has cancer. So do you want me to tell her or will you tell her? And so I said, you know what, you are right there. So you tell her, but I'll be on the phone. So I went to India, sat through her surgery, did her frozen section during surgery got the lump out, looked at it under the scope, it was cancer, it was big. You know, when I put the slide on the scope, that feeling I had, like you just can't explain it, but uh, you know, it sort of drives it home. When you have personal experiences like this, then it's hard uh, to forget that. You, you know there's a patient attached to that slide, the glass slide that is um, sort of inanimate glass slide sitting in front of you is actually attached to a patient at the other end. When you are on frozen section call, you have 20 minutes from the time the specimen comes to the time you give the report out to the OR because the patient's obviously under anesthesia during that while. There's a lot riding on those diagnoses, so it's, it can be very stressful. So, Shlon, what do you think? This is one of the best pathology departments that you will probably ever see. Having been to Cornell, having been to MassGen, I can really say that. The eye knife is an intelligent knife. So it was invented by Zoltan Takas, who is in uh, Imperial College London. And then we brought home that technology and added on our GPS system to it to call it Navi Knife. With Navi Knife, what you can do is you have a registration probe in the tumor, and you use your when you are cutting during surgery, the smoke that comes out of the cautery is collected in the tubes, dissolved in a solvent in the tube, and then the liquid mixed with smoke gets into the mass spec machine. The machine reads the smoke and does mass spec on it. Based on the way our spectra look, we can tell whether the thing that was cut is actually tumor or normal tissue. We can ask the surgeon in real time while the patient is still on the table to cut out a little bit more and get a clean margin. And that's very important from prognostic perspective because those patients whose tumors, you know, get clean margin from the first outset will do better. I, I do surgical oncology when I when I was in practice, and it's so so nice that you get you get a close you're close to the where you think the tumor is or isn't, and then you just take a specimen and you give it to the pathologist, and the pathologist say your margins are clear. But with breast cancer surgery, you don't do that. You you, you don't have that. No matter how hard you try, it's going to take a week or two before you get the results back, and that's that's a problem. We're collecting this data as the surgeon is operating on the patient and we're, we're uh, able to map the 3D time and location of the, the tissue classifications from the eye knife. The real benefit comes when these machines are deployed at peripheral centers in the community where we do not have frozen section expertise or you may not have a 
breast cancer expert to look at the frozen sections in real time and advise whether we need to do further surgery or not. Technology such as digital imaging, digital pathology will allow even patients to have access to images as well. It's not just the doctors. Whoever is able to, whichever hospital, then they can take up the caseload and they can uh, read the patient's biopsies and provide timely care. And we can take it even further because this is sort of pathology 2.0, but the pathology 2.0 is only in preparation for pathology 3.0, which is all going to be uh, machine learning and AI-based algorithms being used. The other thing why we are able to do all of the th things that we are able to do is because CIMO gives us this flexibility to have clinical time and then protected time for academic interests. If there was no CIMO, I don't think I could have done any of these research projects that I'm doing or large-scale studies that I'm doing. That is possible only because of CIMO.